Hello folks, Vince Riley here, CFI, I, Rotor Wing, and Fixed Wing. Today we're going to talk about another topic that's going to help you pass your written or possibly your practical exam when you sit down in front of a, a designated examiner. The minimum VFR equipment is easy to remember. There's a lot of acronyms out there. Uh, one of my favorite is a tomato flames. But for me to be able to remember things, I'm a very visual person. And so real quick, in this short video, we're going to go over some memory tips that will help you be able to remember what equipment's required in the aircraft. And once you finish this video, it's really going to start to click and you're going to be able to remember why it's there, what it does, and uh, why the FAA requires it. So here's an instrument panel from a Cessna 172 or just basically what most aircraft have. There's three things that help us internalize and remember what equipment's needed for a VFR flight. So we're talking about regulations, part 91, and we'll talk about which specifically in part 91. Next comes limitations. Limitations you'll find in the pilot operating handbook and the engine operating manual. And lastly, we're going to talk about colors, specifically red and yellow. Part 91 has a lot of regulations that have to do with VFR equipment requirements, specifically starting at 91.205. This talks about day VFR equipment requirements. Part 91.117 gives us some airspeed limitations. We're limited to 250 knots when we're less than 10,000 feet MSL and 200 knots when we're in class C, D, or B airspace. Part 91.159 talks about VFR cruising altitudes. Parts 91.119, 121, and 155 talk about VFR weather minimums. They talk about altimeter settings. They talk about minimum altitudes over congested areas. And you can kind of see where we're going with these things. So part 91.151 is VFR fuel requirements, 30 minutes day and 45 minutes night. There's also 91 part 213, 197 through 199 talks about minimum equipment lists and ferry flights. And so I did mention my favorite acronym was a tomato flame for day VFR and then flaps for night. So airspeed, tachometer, oil pressure, a magnetic heading indicator, usually referred to as a compass, altimeter, uh, engine temperature for liquid cooled engines, oil temperature for air cooled engines, fuel gauges, landing gear position indicators, anti-collision uh, if the aircraft was built after 1996 or it was certified with anti-collision lights. A manifold pressure gauge for altitude engines, the ELT or emergency locator transmitter and other safety gear, for example flotation, seat belts if the aircraft was manufactured after 1978 or again if it was certified with that equipment on board and shoulder belts after 1986 and the same applies. So at nighttime we're looking at flaps, so fuses, but I have a few students that still fly aircraft old enough to need fuses and so if you're flying at night you need an extra fuse. A landing light if you're using the aircraft for hire at night uh, anti-collision light, position lights, and a source of power to run your electrical equipment. So here's a standard instrument panel taken from a simulator that I like to play with. Um, so what we're looking at, remember my three things. I talked about regulations, I talked about pilot operating handbook and the engine operator's manual, and also colors. So looking at this instrument panel, there's a lot of instruments on it that help us to abide by the aviation regulations as far as air speeds, altitudes, uh, and directions when associated with an altitude. And then the next thing was POH. So there are things that we need on this instrument cluster or somewhere on the dash accessible to the pilot, things that help us maintain our engine within limits when operating in normal cruise flight or even in an emergency. And then last of all, colors. Remember I mentioned there's a lot of gauges that have green a lot of times your vacuum gauges will have green, not a required instrument, but we'll talk about that later, but specifically yellow and red. If a gauge has yellow or red, it's almost always needed as a VFR instrument. Okay, so let's talk about some of the regulations of Part 91. One of them we, we already looked at was maximum air speeds of 250 knots when we're less than 10,000 feet MSL and less than 200 knots if we're flying in class C, D, and B airspace. Uh, we've got our VFR cruising altitudes uh, regulation. We've got minimum altitudes when flying above congested areas or man-made objects. Um, and then we also have minimum weather requirements. So again, basic cloud clearance, for example, 500 below, 1,000 above, and 2,000 uh, in class E airspace below 10,000 feet. So looking at this instrument panel, which of those instruments do you think apply to any of these three stated regulations? Well, first of all, right, the first one, airspeed indicator. We have to have the airspeed indicator. Remember I talked about colors. Airspeed indicator almost always has a red line for V&E, a yellow area for max cruise, and then a green area for the uh, normal operations. So we need the altimeter to determine if we're westbound, 
uh, what altitude to fly at. If we're eastbound, what altitude to fly at. Um, and then last of all on here, for VFR flight, again, VFR cruising altitudes, we need to know uh, which direction we're headed for those VFR cruising altitudes. And then again, back to the altimeter, for uh, making sure that we remain clear of the clouds, maintaining certain altitudes uh, over congested areas and things like that. So another regulation talks about minimum fuel requirements, 30 minutes during the day and 45 minutes at night, so that we can go ahead and check off those fuel gauges. And then next, flying at night, of course, we need to have a power source to be able to power everything. We need our position lights, our anti-collision lights, and nav lights, and extra fuses. Landing light if we're using the aircraft for hire. Now let's look at the minimum VFR equipment we need pertaining to the pilot operating handbook, safely perform what we need to do in flight, and the engine operations manual. First of all, we're gonna need an airspeed gauge because that's the POH is where we find our max cruise speeds, our flap extension speeds, and all the speeds associated with maintaining limits. Next, we need the RPM gauge, right? Because the engine manual says that, that uh, this engine installed in this aircraft has a maximum operating range of this RPM. Plus, when we're planning our cruise and we want to know how much fuel we're going to burn, a lot of times it's dependent upon either RPM or manifold pressure to determine our performance. And we can step right on down to the oil pressure and oil temperature gauges because most of the planes that I fly are air-cooled, um, so we need an oil temperature and then an oil pressure gauge. And again, that comes right out of the engine manual and the POH as far as limitations, minimum and maximum oil pressures. Manifold pressure for an altitude engine, landing gear position indicator, ELT and other safety gear, and seat belt and shoulder belts. And now you've got it. I know you've internalized it, so you probably have to watch this video a couple times through, but really, pretty soon it's going to start clicking. And really, if you forget one of them, looking at that instrument cluster while you're flying and your DPE or somebody asks you, um, do I need this instrument, look at it, and you'll be able to determine pretty quick whether or not you need it. So remember, just as a, a quick review, the regulations, especially Part 91, determine what a lot of the equipment is that we need in the aircraft besides 205 that actually states the equipment. The regulations that tell us what altitude to fly at, what direction to fly, maximum airspeed, a lot of those determine which equipment or instrumentation we need in the aircraft. And we've got our POH, our engine manual, and any safety devices required. And then remember color. If it's got red or yellow, it's almost always definitely needed in the aircraft. All right, so looking at this instrument panel, do we need an airspeed indicator? Affirmative. Do we need an attitude indicator? Negative ghost rider. Do we need an altimeter? Uh, definitely. How about an RPM? Yep. How about fuel gauges for each tank that's installed? Yep, for sure. How about fuel flow, EGT, and other engine instruments? Um, it's a nice thing to have, but not required by the FAA. Um, how about our turn coordinator and slip? VFR flight not required. But our heading indicator? Well, the heading indicator on the dash, which is gyro driven, is not required, but we do need a compass, which is normally located on the dash or on the windshield. How about a VSI? Not needed. Navigation equipment? Not needed. How about uh, vacuum pressure and amp meter? Not needed. How about oil temperature and pressure? Definitely needed. All right, moving on down. How about a power source for flying at night? Do we need that? Definitely. A rotating beacon, for sure. Landing light, roger that. Then the nav lights and strobes, for sure. And then of course the rest of the things, usually somewhere else on the uh, dash of the aircraft, usually lower down or, or uh, ancillary to the, the main panel. So landing gear position indicator, for sure. Extra fuses at night. Manifold pressure gauge for an altitude engine, uh, ELT and safety gear, for example, if you're flying over water, flotation devices, seat belts, and shoulder harnesses. All right, in conclusion, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy producing them, even though they take a lot of time. If you have any comments, recommendations about what you'd like to see next, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you did like the video, give me a like and a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. I've, the next video I'm working on right now, and it's almost done, is going to be showing you how to request a ferry flight on the new website that the FAA has provided. Uh, it's actually a pretty easy process, and I'm so glad they did it because it really simplifies everything in this whole ferry process. If you do have a piece of equipment that's mandatory, uh, that is not functional, and you need to get it to a mechanic somewhere to get it fixed, um, I'm going to show you how to pull that ferry flight.